if your fascia becomes dried up, thick, dense, brittle, dehydrated, which by the way happens to pretty much everyone because of gravity and stress and the nerves get shut down when fascia is tight and thick and dense. And when those nerves get shut down, then the muscles start to atrophy. So your musculature becomes weaker in certain areas. And then you're in, you can be in a constant state of fight or flight, feeling like you're constantly bearing down and white knuckling your way through life. So mm-hmm. it's incredibly um, important to get flow in your tissues. And it's not as difficult as people think it is. Well, hello there. And welcome to this episode of The Terry Cole Show. I have a really interesting guest that I think you are really going to enjoy. Her name is Lauren Roxburgh, and she's someone who I've been following for a while. I think my sister and I discovered her right at the beginning of the pandemic, and her work is so interesting. She's been dubbed the body whisperer. She is really a world-renowned, board-certified, structural integration bodywork practitioner. She's a Pilates pro, an author, an educator specializing in fascia health and mind-body alignment. So if you ever try to like roll your muscles out on a uh, roller ball thing, yeah, that really hurts because you know why? We are neglecting our fascia, apparently. Lauren is also the co-founder of the Aligned Life Studio, a virtual platform that offers a new paradigm in health and fitness with a unique focus on fascia wellness designed to help people align and strengthen their bodies and shed physical and emotional weight while enhancing resilience and confidence. Lauren is also sort of pro healthy aging and all of the things that you can learn from her Instagram and from her platform. She's also offering us a seven day free trial where every day you're doing something for your fascia and for your body, which I'm definitely going to be doing. So I hope you guys join me in doing it. Everything that she's teaching us is how do we keep these God pods as our, my friend, Chris Carr would say as well as possible, as supple as possible, as healthy as possible. And really fascia is, it's still relatively new, even though she's been talking about it since 2012, it really is something that we need to pay attention to. So I hope that you find this interview with Lauren Roxburgh as fascinating as I found interviewing her. I'm so excited to welcome Lauren Roxburgh to the Terry Cole Show. Hi, Lauren, or should I call you Lo? Because that's what everyone seems to call you. Welcome to the show. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So my sister and I became obsessed with you during the pandemic when we were trapped at home. And actually, I have to say, Uh you have a uh, trampoline workout. A very simple one for like weight loss. It's like 15 minutes. And that was my first intro. Like I became obsessed. And that's all I do now is trampoline. And now I'm going to start fascia rolling on all the stuff that you do. But it's so funny. You really were the portal into, and my audience knows I'm obsessed with trampolining because that's what I do every day. But your Amazing. workout was really the the opening to that. So thank you. Oh my gosh. That's an honor. I I'm so passionate about it too, because to me, it's so much more than a workout. It's this incredible holistic healing tool. It hits so many different parts of us as human beings. So yeah, I love that you're doing it. You can tell you have a radiance, a glow. You're glowing from the inside out. (laughs) I I can't wait to get my fashion in line though. So let's, part of what I I find super fascinating about what you're doing is first of all, Lauren, what you're doing, honestly, no one else is doing. So part of it is that there's so much information that I get Mm -hmm. from your platform and all the stuff that you put out there. Mm -hmm. And really your Instagram is also amazing. If you guys are not following uh, Lauren, you should be following her on Instagram. What is your handle again? I'll obviously put it in the show notes, but yeah, it's just low. My nickname, low rocks, bro. If you just put in low rocks, you all come up. (laughs) Yeah, you will. Definitely. Yeah. But what's so interesting about what you put out, even there, is that I always check it. I check like every day, just like what you're doing. And there's always something that if it's not that day, but there's something that I can be like, oh, all right, she's in her backyard. She's doing these simple things. One, There was one that I did recently where you were like on a, it looked like you were kind of on a dock or I could see water in the background, squatting and twisting and arms and touching the earth. And I was like, you know, this is something that really makes a difference. 
and how I feel. So before we get into all the things that I know yeah. all of my listeners or people watching this on YouTube are going to want to know, I want to mm. know from you, sort of mm. what is your backstory? Why your, your personal and professional journey that brought you to be where you are right now? You've got this online platform um, where people can work out with you, but you have a really unique frame through mm. which you teach. So how, how'd you get there? Yeah, it was actually quite early on in my life when my mom was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer when I was 16. So I was completely just distraught and wondering, how did this happen? I mean, she raised me with like Wayne Dyer and Deepak Chopra and all of the, you know, pioneers in this space. Mm -hmm. And so we were very shocked at how this could have happened. She was doing yoga, eating healthy, juicing, all that stuff way before people were you know, it's so trendy now. But essentially, when that happened, I had just got my driver's license. She asked me to drive her to get her chemo drips at Stanford University, where I grew up in Northern California. And um, I would ask the doctors in that moment, I'd say, where does cancer come from? And they would say, mm -hmm. humbly, you know, it's environmental, it's genetic, but there's this whole other piece that we don't know, and we, we don't understand yet. And so something inside of me, some instinct, intuition, something about my purpose was awakened. And I went on a journey and decided that I didn't want to be a doctor because they only knew part of it. And so I really, I decided to go forward and learning about holistic healing. And the first thing I just really dove into was nutrition. Nutrition was really my passion at that time. I was an all-American swimmer and an athlete, really excelling in my sport and being physical was always came easy to me. But learning about nutrition was the first way into understanding that what you put in your body, everything you ingest, not just food, energy, you know, environmental things are just having a huge impact on our entire system. And then I went further into understanding as years went on how important the emotional part of health and wellness is. And that's where I realized that that's how my mom became sick was through her emotional stuff that wasn't processed properly. And she held on to quite a bit of trauma and a victim energy. And um, at the end of her life, when she did pass away, she, she was so grateful that I was able to learn from her, her not mistakes, but her life and what, sure. you know, she had gone through. And so it was very, yeah, it was emotional and empowering and turning power into purpose. And so I really dedicated my life, literally, like if something took, took on inside of me, like there was no going back. And so I studied Pilates in my, you know, when I was like 19 and 20, became a personal trainer, um, studied nutrition, exercise physiology at UC Santa Barbara, and then studied a bunch more healing modalities. The one that really clicked was in my late 20s when I discovered structural integration, which is the work of Ida Rolf. And Ida Rolf was a rocket scientist in the 1960s. And she's the one that discovered fascia. She was um, studying the human body in gravity. And what she discovered is fascia. And in the Western world, I know the ancient modalities have been studying it, like, you know, Chinese medicine and Ayurveda for years. But um, it was really quite a very kind of westernized discovery, even though she's very holistic as well. But when I learned that work and I discovered what fascia was, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the, the missing piece for me. And that solidified my purpose. And this was way before anyone else was really talking about fascia. This was back in like 2012. So wow. it's, it was quite a while ago. And now it's becoming such a trending thing. So I'm, I'm fired up about that. <laughs> It's it's interesting. It's like, it's exciting when people start talking about it, but then it's also can be everywhere. So let's just say we don't know anything about fascia. Would you please give us the fascia 101 as to what is it and why is it important? And am I even pronouncing it right? Is it fascia? So great question. It can be either. I mean, if some people say fascia or fascia. I call it fascia. Okay. Fascia Same. is my love language. So I use the word all the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so give us the, the breakdown of what actually is it and why should we care? Why does it matter? Absolutely. Well, especially because the new science is revealing a lot of the things that we've known for a long time. So fascia, also known as connective tissue, it's a thin layer of tissue that lies underneath our skin and wraps around every muscle, organ, nerve, and node inside of our body. So think of it like the body's glue. Okay. So it's this outer tissue 
that's the superficial fascia, but it also goes and weaves in deeper into the visceral fascia. That's the deeper layers of fascia weaving through the organs. And then we also have the fascia that is even deeper than that, that actually connects every cell of our body and it intersects with every system of our body. So we have 12 systems in our body, including, I won't name them all, but including the digestive system, the nervous system, the lymphatic system, obviously the cardiovascular system, and it intersects with Mm -hmm. all 12 of those systems. And so there's new research that's actually showing us emerging research that's showing us that fascia is now being considered the meta system of the body because it's intersecting and not only intersecting, but communicating with every single system in the body. So it's really actually this incredible site of biological activity. So what we've known in the past, and I've always taught is that fascia is like the scaffolding, it's responsible for the shape of our body. So the way we show up, in our posture and the way we carry ourselves and present ourselves in the world. But now we're really realizing that it's more than that. It's, it's also sending and receiving information, nutrients, light, sound, vibration, frequency, energy, and even consciousness. So some people in the spiritual world, if your audience is interested in this at all, is the fascia is the thing that is like, actually giving us our soul. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like transmitting our soul through our body. It's really powerful. So you can see why I'm so obsessed with it because it's, it's affecting and influencing everything we do in our lives. And we have so much more power over the health of it than we realize with very simple and effective. It's really just tuning into your awareness of your body and the consciousness, becoming more conscious, starting to tune in and listen. And now we're even, it's even being considered because it's the largest sense organ has more actually sensory nerves in it than muscles. And so now we're calling it the sixth sense. So think of like skin is to touch, like we know all the senses, right? So skin is Mm -hmm. to touch, fascia is to feeling. So fascia is the thing that if we want to you know, be able to feel to be connected to our bodies, we have to tune in and listen and feel again. And feeling is something that I think our culture has really numbed for many years. And especially as we've gone through so much stuff in our in the collective in our collective culture on the planet, it's like we've all been traumatized by so much that's Mm -hmm. happened. So we have to tune in and listen to the whispers of our of our body. So we don't have to hear the scream. So it's a very (laughs) important part of our body that is has not really been researched that well so it hasn't been validated by science but now that's changing there's a lot of new interesting research coming from all sides whether it's gut health or hormonal health or nervous system rebalancing even cancer there's promising research that working with our fascial system can actually decrease tumor growth and even prevent cancer growth altogether Wow. So, yeah. so that's unbelievable. So let's, <laughs> let's, cause I knew some of that, but I certainly didn't know all of that. So let's yeah. talk about for someone who's a lay person, let's just say mm-hmm. asking for a friend who's in very good, shape, <laughs> but yeah. certainly doesn't stretch enough. And I'm not really working with my fascia. Like I'm not actually doing the things, which is why I was so psyched to have you come on the show. And I know that you've got a, a free seven day, experience that we can all have. And I cannot wait. My sister is committed with me. We're going to do it. Yes. But, but what is, what is happening when we're not doing it? Like what is building up in our systems? What, what is the downside to not paying attention to and stretching or massaging or flushing? Like what are the things that we can do to not be stagnant with our fascia? And I don't even know if that's how you would describe it. Cause I don't think I have a great handle on it, but you tell me. No, it's definitely it. It all has to do with if if your fascia becomes dried up, thick, dense, brittle, dehydrated, which, by the way, happens to pretty much everyone because of gravity and stress and, you know, emotional tension that's being carried, emotional baggage, when it becomes creating blockages and congestion, it's preventing your body to have not only like 
energetic flow in the chi and the meridians, but also blood flow, Circu- like oxygenated blood becomes stagnant. The nerves get shut down when fascia is tight and thick and dense. And when those nerves get shut down, then the muscles start to atrophy. So your musculature becomes weaker in certain areas. And then you're in, you can be in a constant state of fight or flight of, you know, basically feeling like you're constantly bearing down and white knuckling your way through life. So Mm -hmm. it's incredibly um, important to get flow in your tissues. And it's not as difficult as people think it is. It's not something that you have to do for like two hours a day. Essentially getting your tissues, your fascia flowing takes, like I mentioned earlier, it takes awareness. It takes you know, taking a few deep breaths, like one of my favorite tools is doing the deep sigh. And now, you know, Andrew Huberman's just recently talking about how the number one thing to reduce stress in the body is to do the deep sigh. And that's just doing the double inhale. (sighs) That's sending a message to Mm -hmm. your nervous system to start going to the going into the rest digest mode. So it's incredibly important to to calm our nervous systems down and to regulate our nervous system in order to get our bodies to be able to go into the healing mode. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to work with our fascia because our nerves are in the fascia. They're literally like, you know, like if you picture kind of the spider webbing that's going through the whole body, it's like the nerves are like floating in the fascia. So if you want to get your nervous system regulated, you work with your fascial system you get the hydration back in. Essentially, if you want to think about a good example would be a piece of scar tissue or a knot that you have in your shoulders. You know what that is when people say I have a knot, it's a, it's essentially bound fascia that has no blood flow or lymph flow or chi flow going through it. So your body has to just kind of go around it, right? The, the flow right. has to go around it. And so that creates inflammation, stagnation, a pooling of energy and toxins. And I've worked with, you know, orthopedic surgeons over my career hands on, and they always love getting their fascia worked on because they know as soon as you go under the knife, when your fascia then heals itself, it will heal in more of a over bundled up knotty tissue. So it will end up Mm -hmm. becoming rigid and thick and dense, and it will end up becoming blocked. And then it will put pressure on, you know, all the other systems in the body. And essentially like, for people that want to lose weight as well, like it's not necessarily fat, it's your fascia. So if you can get your fascia hydrated and flowing and energized again and get that system to be able to remove the cellular waste more efficiently, then you're going to be able to, your body will become enhanced. I, I call it a biological upgrade. When you start working with your fascia, you get a biological upgrade because all of your systems will work better. So it's not only only about just like eating less and trying, you know, like all these things, like try to de-stress, try to eat less, try to work out harder. It's actually not. What about if we got our systems to become more robust? And I like to call fascia the Wi-Fi of your insides, sending and receiving information that works for people like the general public. Like what is fascia? What is going on? It's the system in the body. And if you don't want slow Wi-Fi, Sometimes it happens, <laughs> but if you have fast Wi-Fi, then your system will become upgraded and you're going to be able to get things done more efficiently. You'll sleep deeper. You'll recover more quick, quickly. You'll be able to assist your body in preventing cancer. And because cancer is really, it's a pooling of energy, really a blockage. Mm-hmm. It's your own body. It's an autoimmune thing. And so working, starting to work with your body a little bit more. I like to think of when we work with our fascia, essentially, it's kind of like flossing your teeth. Mm-hmm. It's essentially like, you know, you're flossing the tissue to, to remove the, the blockages, the um, plaque, the plaque inside the body so that your body can just do what it's, what it can, what it knows what to do best, which is to thrive instead of just survive. So it's really creating optimal environment for you to age well, for us to function well, to not get stiff, to not have the same. Because, you know, I find that in working out for decades, they'll be the same, like you're saying, the same knot, the same, the same thing where, you know, you work on it. I have a massage therapist work on it, but I feel like what is missing is the, the same commitment and consistency that I have with the other things I do to want to live a full life, right? I want to, I want to stay physically 
fit so I can do whatever the hell I want. So I can travel and I can hike and I can, you know, there's so much um, freedom in being well. And I also realize mm. like it's a, it's a privilege. Some people don't have it. Some people don't have good health just naturally, but mm -hmm. the things that we can do, I feel like this is something that, you know, I was drawn to your work initially because it's so obvious to me that this is what's missing. And of course, anytime I've like rolled myself out, like on a foam roller, <laughs> I've been yes. in so much friggin' pain. I'm like, Oh my God. But then it, when I, when I would get consistent with that, I would be like, Oh, so much less pain on week two, like realizing clearly there yeah. is something stuck in, you know, as my friend, Chris Carr would say, clearly you got issues in your tissues that need some, <laughs> some attention. So thinking of fascia as like the key to better aging, what would you mm -hmm. suggest? Let's say people in my audience are in their forties, thirties, fifties, and they're like, I haven't done this. I am in decent shape. Even if I'm not in decent shape, would this still be helpful to me? And what do you think is a good way to start? Yeah, I mean, it's it's actually more simple than people than people realize. It's it's something that anyone and everyone of all ages and all sizes can get started with immediately. The thing is, when we go to sleep at night, and we know how important sleep is for our health. When we go to sleep at night, our fascia wraps around us and kind of does this wound healing heals our gut, heals our brain, clears the gray matter out of our brain. But it also kind of almost builds this like cocoon of tissue around us. And that's mm -hmm. part of the healing process. It's something we want to happen. But as you see animals do when cats get up from their nap, they're going in, they're doing these yoga stretches, you know, and down dogs and opening their bodies up. My like non-negotiable is like right upon waking, get up, I mean, I like to do my tongue scraping because that's also helping your body like get rid of all the toxins from the night. Mm -hmm. And we do have fascia on our tongues. Walk outside after that or drink some water after you tongue scrape. Then walk outside if you have any kind of earth around. And if you don't have earth, then I highly recommend getting an earthing mat because I've seen like massive shifts just getting on the earth and getting the. And if you don't have an earthing mat, just open up your blinds and let the sunlight in. And if you can go outside and be on grass and go and look directly at the sun, like your eyes can be closed, no sunscreen, no sunglasses, because then when you have the earth energy, you're recharging your body battery. And then you're also inviting the light into your body, which helps you actually generate more melatonin, helps with your circadian rhythms and helps you sleep better that night. But also it's basically shining the light through the fascia, right? As the fascia is this information highway, it's getting that light into your system again, which is what we, you know, essentially want is to become enlightened, to become full, fuller of light. So the sun mm -hmm. will charge that up. And then while you're out there just doing, I have like five, a five minute fascia flow, which I can share with you guys. It's in my, mm -hmm. it's also in the, it's in the seven day course as well. But the five minute yeah. fascia flow is like a non-negotiable stress hygiene. Think about it almost like you're giving yourself like, you know, we exfoliate our skin every day, almost every day or every few days, depending on who you are. But essentially that's what you're doing. Then you're starting your day off so much cleaner, so much more clear and open and you just feel like a different person and the more you do that five minutes every day you will start to actually literally reverse age i i mean i've seen it with clients i've seen it in my own self and i can't believe the results in just five minutes a day it is actually pretty profound now what's happening though when we're doing this this is not yoga a lot of people ask is yoga working with your fascia of course it is but in the new research that i've been studying and a lot of things that are coming out of Europe, especially Germany and Italy, they are finding that the meridians are also in our fascia. So if you're interested, I've been doing acupuncture my whole life. It's worked super well for me. So you're essentially working with your meridians when you're working with the fascial planes. And so we address the fascial planes. It's more like whole body movement. So it's getting, so you're not like spot treating. You're thinking, you're thinking holistically in the system. You're doing twisting, oming or humming. If that works for you, that vibrates the, um, you know, tension or like swallowed emotions out of the throat, twisting, inverting, you know, 
basically getting your body to move in these multi-dimensional movements, really it's quite somatic and it's also non-linear. So it's, it's not like, it's actually, it's interesting, Terry, is that there's this new energy coming through me and it's more of this feminine energy and it's a little bit more sensual because I think a lot of us have gotten into these like Pelotons and going to the gym and just pumping the weights and all this stuff. And actually what we need more to get more results is what I'm seeing and witnessing is that we need more of this. It's called like the Kundalini energy. It's like a serpentine mm -hmm. energy. The, it's a sexual energy. That's not mm -hmm. only about sex. It's actually about sure. creation, connection, life. charisma, life yeah. force energy. And it is so incredibly powerful and potent. It is the fountain of youth. So if you can mm -hmm. access that energy through getting your body moving in these different non-linear somatic ways, which is what I teach inside my Align Life Studio, you know, virtual platform, multiple ways, whether it's using the foam roller or just doing the fascia flows with no equipment or the rebounder, bringing in this new feminine energy, which is rising on the planet as well. So I'm really excited about it because it's incredibly important for the evolution of us as humans and bringing that feminine energy to come through all of us, not just women, but men as well. And I've seen men starting to be like these, you know, men that are quite into this stuff like I am, and they're very masculine men, but they're getting this energy, this kind of serpentine, circular, real um, sensual energy to mm -hmm. move through. And this, what we're seeing is actually helping people release lodged stuck emotions and trauma. And this is profound because you don't need to just talk about it and redo it in your mind. It's taking you out of your overthinking cerebral mind. It's just there's when I say go, all we need to do is this five minute fascia flow. I'm serious, like because it's hitting all these aspects of being a human, which is so the major ones are obviously physical, biomechanical, biological. But also mm -hmm. we're, we're actually getting into the emotional, you know, the, like carrying that heavy, dense emotion, e energy and emotion. So it's helping people process emotions without having to speak them. And then it's, wor it's working with your energetic system, like quantumly. So if mm -hmm. you raise your actual vibration in your body through these ways of moving your body and nourishing your body and getting the nutrients through your body and the hydration, the cellular hydration through your body, your vibration shifts and you become a different human. Like you actually become, I like to say, upgraded. You, you get this upgrade. Right. It's powerful. So where can, where can people find the seven day? Um... It's just fashionchallenge.com. It's super easy. Or they can head over to the Aligned Life Studio and we've got like over 300 different flows and practices in there. Sound healing, because sound healing also helps vibrate the tissue and helps elevate our frequency and also purify lymphatically as well. So it helps with also the brain and balancing the brain hemispheres. And then obviously all the different types of movements that are quite different and unique than what you would see out there like in, I mean, it is, you know, Pilates is a lot of my background, mm -hmm. but I also have brought in all these other aspects of like somatic dance, even somatic movement, intuitive movement. And this work is so powerful to help people tune back into their intuition and their instincts as well, which is what I think is happening right now. What's rising on the planet is this realization, especially with AI that we need to get more in touch with our BI, our body intelligence, or we're going to get left in the dust and need AI for everything. But I believe, and I mean, I have a, a crew of people that believe this too, that we actually are, our bodies are the most advanced technology available in the universe. And we have just barely scratched the surface on what we can do with these incredible, this incredible software hardware, Agreed. software, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> both. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, it I, is I, both. <laughs> it, it really is. I totally agree that there's so much more. And I think that the, I love the idea, uh, Lo, of, of dialing in instead of dialing out. And I do think that yeah. from pandemic and lockdown and all the experiences we've had, a lot of the way we sort of survived it, at least a lot of my therapy clients and people in my groups and courses was a lot of numbing 
you know, a lot of blocking yeah. out a lot of, I just have to get by and mm -hmm. this is an invitation. So you guys, everyone listening, if you're watching this on YouTube, this is yeah. your invitation. I'm going to be doing the seven day fascia challenge. And Love I want it. you to join me because there's no reason not to, it's totally free. You're getting turned on to Lauren's work and to something that you can do five minutes a day. If you want to feel better, if you want to upgrade your biology and what do you have to lose, right? Seven, five minutes, you know, seven, seven days of your life, give yourself an experience because I really do believe this is the next thing, especially when it comes to aging well. And again, I was turned on to your work because a lot of your messaging is about how mm -hmm. can we do it better with less pain, with more joy, with more ease, with less forcing. And you're right. I see a lot of people going to the, you know, going to the gym and sort of banging it out and crushing it and all these things. And what for me, I, I'm also a wood element. Like I, I can be very, you know, like hard in the yeah. way of checking boxes and getting shit done. And there's something that is so empowering about that feeling of getting into flow and also taking care of this God pod in a way that is better than what we've been doing. So beautiful. It's so true. So it's the new kind of evolution of the fitness or even the wellness industry even is that we're going to start working with our body instead of against it. There's yeah. so much we can do with our body. And I actually believe that we will be able to become even more open to having conversations with energy through that. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. even just the whole idea of like intuitive or energy medicine will evolve and there will be more energy healers on the planet because it's needed so much when people become more in tune and start working with instead of against the amount of energy that we bleed out when we're working against our bodies and our natural ways that our bodies work too. like starting to tune into that and knowing the kind of whether you you learn about your doshas or right the type of body type that you have like work with that body type start to have gratitude for that body type and make the most of it because everyone is different on the planet and there and that's a beautiful thing that diversity so we want to integrate that but i also to your point of the the aging well you know like why do we have to like there's been this big pushback on like anti-aging and i agree i'm not a big like anti-person but mm -hmm. why can't we age with joy and pleasure and juiciness and still maintain vitality even through all the stages that we go through as women i mean and men of course it's like why can't we then defy gravity and feel that sense of you know alignment from the inside out and alignment isn't just like a place that you get a destination it's really a journey mm -hmm. and it's it's the way there and it's the process and it's constantly about the ebb and the flow but the ebb and the flow is listening and tuning in to where you're at and what your body needs this day in right. this moment this was so fascinating. I'm so happy we finally did it. Yay. Um, I want to ask I you one last question um, that I ask lots of people on the show because it's about boundaries because I'm obsessed. So personally, what has been your most challenging boundary struggle and how did you overcome it if you have? Oh, gosh, I would definitely say it would be in the beginning of my career when I was working with clients one on one because I was so incredibly passionate, I would like go over time and then I would say yes to everyone. And then I was getting up at like five in the morning and going till eight o'clock at night. This is before kids. And I just was saying yes to everyone. And I real I was getting sick all the time and it was depleting mm. me. And I also wasn't getting the joy that I was, you know, when I was in more of that balance. So what I had to do is basically start refining my schedule and, you know, pulling things back and working only a few days a week. And, and, but I wrote down like a dream calendar and I highlighted it in different color codes. And that was incredible because I was able to, like, I was like, there's no way this schedule is possible. And then like, I looked at it six months later and it had become what it was, you know, what I wanted it to be. So oh, yeah. that was really incredible. And then I think also the big one along those lines is like, if it's not a hell yes, then it's a no. 
Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at now with that. I love that so much, uh, protecting your time, you know, having boundaries around your sacred time is so important because of course we can't, we can't give from an empty bucket, which is what we end up trying to do when we're over-functioning like you were describing. So that is super duper helpful. Thank you so much for being here, Lo. I really do appreciate you. You guys, you know where to go. You know what to do. Follow Lo on social media. You will love her stuff. I'm so thrilled that I found your work and congratulations on everything that you're doing. And I'm just grateful that you were here. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Terry. I love everything that you're powering into the world and I'm grateful for our connection and I can't wait to do more.